Good morning. It's Tea Time Tuesday. I'm Lark and I'm in Wisconsin, Zone 5. We'll start out in the front yard this morning. Lots of color and I have annuals. Some annuals, some perennials in the front yard. We'll go over a few of them. The perennial that I'm showing you now is called Basket of Gold. It's an alyssum a perennial alyssum and it's yellow and this path has quite a few of them up to the sidewalk and it blooms in spring so if you'd like to see the color I have in spring it's mostly that basket of gold and then the corabels the burgundy leaf corabels so I try to have color from about May in the front yard beginning of May other perennials are Russian sage and cat mint. The cat mint will be reblooming again. It's starting to now. That's <clears throat> the inner part of the circle. And then the Mexican sunflower for now. That's an annual. And of course the marigolds. And the Salvia. That one's called Victoria. Gets about two foot tall. Still giving me color are the Potentella bushes and the Japanese beetles are starting to decline. I'm not squishing all the time. Oh, the PG hydrangea is changing to a, a slight salmon color pink. So pretty. More marigolds, more cat mint, Russian sage on the other side. The crab apple, this one's called prairie fire, is starting to get uh, the berries turn in red. It should be pretty. It will be pretty, I know it will. In my veggie garden, the opening to the veggie garden from the front yard with scarlet runner bean. So I'm repeating the orange from the front of the house with the marigolds. And then I have it running over to the other side. And I have to harvest beans today. I've been doing something new with my beans. I'm not blanching them. I'm freezing them uh, after I wash them and take, uh, cut the ends off. I'm freezing them, flash freezing them. Much easier. Calendula attracting lots of beneficial insects into my veggie garden. Amaranth, Hopi, H-O-P-I, My raspberries. It's nice having uh, so many pollinators. I think every flower gets pollinated. Mm. Tomatoes. I top them, but they're too tall. So we're just going to let them go. Plus the Juliet, I'll probably be able to pick for a long time. The uh, blight doesn't seem to have slowed down the production of tomatoes. We're here on brandy wine. I will be topping this, maybe this week, and just take it down to where the tomatoes are. Brandy wine, celebrity 
uh, Chadwick cherry. This will all be coming down. Maybe the Chadwick, like the other cherry, it keeps producing. So as long as it's producing without the fungus on the tomato, then I will keep it up. Big beef, I think that is. Barrage. Cucumber. I fermented some yesterday. That's the market more, so I just picked them uh, when they were about, oh, seven inches, six inches. My fall crop of uh, kale and Swiss chard. Little spinach, red lettuce, nasturtiums, carrots. I harvest them as I see the tops, you know, poking out of the ground and they're big. Fever few. Yes, I keep dandelions in there. It makes it easy when I want uh, to stir fry some greens and add that to my greens so I don't have to go hunting for them down in the bog garden or in the flower garden. Green beans, they're playing catch up. I should get some. I don't know what the production will be on those. Peppers, doing awesome. Now, for my part of Wisconsin, I just hope that it stays warm enough that all these flowers can develop into peppers. Especially that, I only have like a couple poblanos, so, and that's a poblano I want to I like freezing those because they have a little bite to them, a little bit flavor. But the Italian roasters are doing awesome, as are the Carmen. Celery. Spearmint's going to get picked as soon as we had a little sprinkle of rain today, so I won't pick today. I wait till it's like dry for 24 hours. So I'll be picking the spearmint and the... Um, sage and the holy basil see the holy basil is going to flower too so i pick off of that the flowering parts probably once a week and dry and then my malabar spinach the red stem more peppers i think that's a, a italian roaster i'm not sure doesn't matter. Italian roaster and Carmen taste very similar. Cherry bomb. <gasps> That's an experiment. We're going to see how hot they are. I hope not too hot. My peas. They have flowers and peas. Yummy. And the weather's been in the 70s, so not much warmer than that. So they're loving it. And the peppers are going, oh, don't get any colder than 70. little kale left from spring and there's Swiss chard in there too from spring my spring planting okay let's go where we'll go into the flower garden uh-oh I better pick and it better be right after this video because I don't like big beans. I don't like them tough. So we'll be picking today. So pretty. Isn't that with the flowers too? So pretty. I know a lot of gardeners are starting to wind down and get tired and feel overwhelmed and that's okay. I think that's the first year I said that where I'm okay with it. And so if things are getting brown and I'm not deadheaded, being out in nature is what I find the most rewarding. For my mind, body, and spirit. And the beauty is a kicker. 
Oh yeah, I still weed now and then. I still am. I don't want them to get ahead of me more than they have. Turtle head. That's today's bloom. Okay guys, turtle head. Late season bloomer. Those are blooming shorter because I cut them back. Otherwise they would have hid the lobelia and the phlox. They get pretty tall. Especially if they get a lot of water and we had rain. So they got a lot of water. So cutting back makes your perennial bloom shorter and later. So here in Wisconsin, we don't cut back after the 4th of July. Or you wouldn't get much of a um, display of blooms. Garlic chives. That's one you better be on top of when it goes starts going to seed. Or you will have them all over. And my fever few starting to rebloom. So that dash of white later in the season is going to look pretty. Perilla, I will leave some of it go to seed. It's going to be starting to be pulled out soon. Anemone, another good late bloomer. That's a very light pink. I don't know if it's showing up light pink on video, but there is a white too. Jopai. Don't those sounds make it? They make me feel like I'd like to lay in a hammock. Which I would, but I don't want the mosquitoes to bite me either. I'd fall asleep and wake up all bit up. So no more hammocks here. Late season color with not too much work. If you don't mind a very busy looking garden. Now what will happen in about three weeks is we will take a blade to this garden and cut it down. And that's the chop and drop. It will lay and decompose. You go back to my other videos and you'll see that in spring, I did have debris still that was not decomposed, but that's okay. Feeds the earth. Saves my body. These coneflowers really bloom a long time, don't they? There are different types of goldenrod that are going to be getting ready to bloom. So sad our hibiscus just bloomed for one day. And then as they're drying up, they look so ugly. Unless I get in there. I used to get in there and deadhead them, but it's not happening. Now, look at this area here and see that the sedum is starting. The autumn joy sedum, the pink the blue, the gold, and now a white will be added with the fever few. So letting things reseed or cutting them back, deadheading, gives you longer, color, longer bloom and more color. sounds. Asters. Pretty soon. Woodpecker. You hear him? I think that's a pileated.
Oops, there's some tick seeds still blooming. Must have got cut back a little. Very good. Rose Campion, and I let go to seed now. Beautiful, chaotic mess. Another new perennial blooming today is the Sweet Autumn Clematis. I think last week I showed you one bloom. Well, that's going to be a pretty dash of white in this area, isn't it? Exactly what I wanted. Now that gets cut down all the way to the ground. There's no leaving any of it up because it is aggressive. see the time here. Maybe we can make it down to the, yeah, we'll take a walk down to the veggie garden, the bog area. There is some turtle head in here. This is a shorter variety called uh, hot lips. Ground cover, late blooming sedum, burgundy foliage, hot pink flower. The foliage starts looking yucky this time of the year, but the flower is pretty. Hawkweed. Oh yes, flea bane, which I cut back. I cut this one back and that one down there. And it's looking pretty. Giving me that white I need right now. Nadia. The burgundy. Okay, okay, I was going to show you the flower on the uh, Persicaria Lance Corporal. This is it. Okay, can you see that skinny little stem? It'll get a little hot pink, but not much. But it's the foliage I grow this for. Persicaria Lance Corporal. And if you don't want it to spread all over, then you just cut it, cut it back before it gets the uh, seeds. No problem. There's some white lobelia. I usually pull it out, but I like the white next to the uh, Blue Angel hostas. And then it matches the white on the ho hosta in front of it. Okay. The mosquitoes are buzzing in my ears here. Trying to follow a finch. <laughs> He's working that Joe Pie weed.
Do any of you drink herbal tea? I call this Tea Time Tuesday, and I don't even ask if you drink herbal tea. Be kind of interesting. I can't be the only one. The jewelry is just fantastic this time of the year. This is the other side of the bog garden. Where my pumpkins didn't make it. Whoops. See the mushrooms growing up on the log there? Beans are doing okay on the arch here. They probably need picking too. Yep, they do. This cattle fencing will last you forever. I got that out of the dumpster and it was years old when it was in the dumpster probably. And it's already lasted me probably, oh, I'm guessing five, six years. Tomatoes have blight, and I told you I am not removing anything. So I just pick what I can and freeze and make up some sauce. Have a few beets I had planted later. And then these beets over here need picking. I keep them covered because there's bunnies or somebody that's getting in here. The peppers, now that this garden is in the bog, it doesn't get watered. So Let's see how the celery's doing. It's doing okay. Okay. Nice peppers. This, whoa. Whoa. What is that? That's an Italian roaster. That is a long one. Holy man. That's got to be about 12 inches. Never seen a Italian roaster that long. And then a Carmen. Oh, here's my, my poblanos. Yep. There's my poblanos. And I got them tied to a stake. What do we have here? Looks like a red bell. It says green, but it's turning red. Probably left it on too long, right? Some jalapenos. And I freeze them. I slice them open halfway, and then we use them mostly for poppers. And then this is the sweet red, like you get in the bag at your organic store or Aldi. Aldi sells them now. This one's a yellow one. And I just seeded them and saved the seeds. And they're doing good. More bell peppers. The last of my spring broccoli and my spring kale. More spring broccoli and the green onions. Some later onions, spring onions. Oh, some more kale. This is later kale. I have to keep checking the for those cabbage worms. I haven't been too good at it. Uh, purslane. I put it in the ground instead of in the fire pit. See if it does gets thicker and better. More kale. Oh, Malabar going to seed and that's good because I want to save the seed. I don't pick it too often down here. I usually just use what's in the west garden. 
pumpkins coming through the fence. That's my purslane bed. Somebody decided to taste one of my tomatoes. Didn't like it. They go, I don't want to eat it. It's got blight. Carrots, my late carrots, and in a container. So we'll see how the carrot turns out. That's not too deep of a container. That one has a deeper container. I had Malabar growing up here too. Yeah. Wonder why it went to flower so fast. So much water. The one up in the West Garden has nice big leaves on it and isn't flowering. More of my uh, Swiss chard. It's more spring onions or green onions. Oh, my red noodle bean. Can you see it? My red noodle bean. The bushes look horrible. Too much water. Look at too much water. The blueberries are looking good, the bushes. Not a lot of blueberries this year, but the bushes are good. So that's it, my gardening friends. That's the tour. Oh, one more thing I have to ask you. Now, my watermelon is getting bigger. It's a sugar baby. But someone had said, or several of you had said, look at the tendril closest to the uh, watermelon and see if it's dried up. Well, I don't see any tendrils on that. I mean, when I'm up close, I really don't see any tendrils on it. So I'm going to pick that one of these days. And then this one here is a littler one. So we'll leave him on for a while. Volunteer tomato. I don't think any true gardener likes pulling out reseeds. Especially since it's in a space it's not needed. Interesting what it'll be turn out to be. So that's it. Thank you for joining me. Always a pleasure to read your comments, to see who comes along with me. Do wish we could walk in person. A couple of you I've met. It's amazing on YouTube to meet and then we find out we're not far apart. So take care, and thank you. Have a wonderful day.